Okay, let's start the, the uh, third session in the seminar. And we're going to um, talk about the Shabbat in the, here in this session. Now, I understand that many of you, if you have a, a period of time in your church, um, I understand that you maybe um, w was indoctrinated. You already know and understands, understands what is Shabbat or what Shabbat means. Um, but but it's, it's, if, if not, we need to have this set up. Um, the Jewish people, they are proud of two things in their culture. Number one is their language, and number two is the keeping of Shabbat. And they say that because of these two practices, they still continue alive. After uh, thousands of years, other cultures have perished, uh, like the Aztecs in Mexico, like the different Indians, different groups, they, are had, they all of them perished except the Jewish people. And they said that they still continue as a culture and is, as a people because they keep their language and because they keep Shabbat. Now, that's not exactly right, obviously. They're still alive because God promised to them that they will keep them alive. They will never disappear. And it's God who is keeping them alive, who is protecting them, and who is prospering them. Okay, but, but let's go into, uh, uh, we as, as workers among the Jewish uh, people, we need to understand about, uh, among the Jewish people, we need to understand what is Shabbat. Okay, so we're going to see a few details here. So go to your Bibles, please, to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, we're going to read only a couple of verses here. I want to ask Brother uh, Eric if he can read for us, please, verse 27 and 28, please. Mark chapter 2, 27 and 28. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Thank you very much. What is more important, the day or the man? Jesus makes that clear. He says here that um, the Sabbath was made for for men, not man for the Sabbath. So it's more important the man that, than the day. And we're going to uh, study a little bit more about that. Let's ask God's blessing upon this uh, session. Dear Lord, thank you for your Bible. Thank you for, uh, because thank, thank you because we have it in, in our language. Uh, we have here the Bible in English that we can understand English that for the English speaking people. And I have it in my own language in, in Spanish. And thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your revelation. And thank you for the lessons, the doctrines that we find in the, in the Bible, the commandments also. And I want to ask you that you please bless time and help us to uh, read the Bible, help us to um, understand the sense that, 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 that you want us to understand and, and help us just to enjoy what you said, please. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, what is Shabbat? Now, in, in our days there is, um, there is some uh, confusion and debate and even different religions or, or um, uh, religions or denominations has raised and, and everything is around this matter of keeping Shabbat. Now, uh, the, the Jewish people, they said that uh, they must necessary to keep Shabbat, okay? Now, uh, for the understanding, you, you, you know that the, the day began for the Jewish people in the evening, okay? Not in the midnight like for us, for the Gentiles, but in the evening of the day when this, uh, this, the, the sun gets onto the sunset and there is no light and you can distinguish three stars in heaven, at that uh, time, the new day began for them, okay? So, Friday evening for them is, is, uh, is the beginning of Shabbat or the, the day of, of, uh, of Shabbat, okay? We're going to study about that. So uh, th that began for them. Now, let's go into study about that. Let's go to the very beginning. The, Jew the Jewish people, they said, okay, we must to keep Shabbat. Uh, the uh, Muslims say, no, we must to keep. The holiday is Friday. Now, Christianism, we claim that the Sunday is the day that we must to worship. So who is right, who is wrong, what the Bible says about all of this? And uh, let's go and see what the Bible says. Okay, go to the very beginning. Genesis chapter 1, please. Genesis chapter 1, verses 30, uh, we're going to start in verse um, 31, and I will ask, please, if you can continue to read on to chapter 2, verse 3, please. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay, just a pause here. Thank you, sir. Uh, the, the Jewish people, they, the Jewish people, they have uh, this um, um, uh, way of counting the days uh, by the description of Genesis chapter one. It was the evening and the morning. That's why they begin their day in the evening of the of the date, and they have uh, the next day already. Okay, uh, chapter two, verse one, please. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. 
And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. On to there. Thank you very much. We need to distinguish first here uh, the two different things here. One thing is the day, the seventh day. Now the Jewish people, they, they, the Jewish people, they count the days according to the number of the day. Yom Rishon is the first day, is Sunday, and they continue. And the, the seventh day is the Shabbat for them. Now we need to understand this is Saturday for us. Uh, one thing is the day, Saturday, okay. Uh, and another thing is what God did in that day. What God did, He rest, okay, in the Saturday. Now, he could do that in Sunday or Tuesday or Wednesday or any other day. But he decided to do that in Saturday. So we need to understand this distinction. It's not the same. Shabbat is not the two things together. No, we need to understand what the Shabbat means, okay? One thing is the day, that is Saturday. Another thing is what God did in that day. So God rested in that day, okay? Two different things. Now, um... <laughs> God creates everything in six days. He creates the light. He separates the light from the darkness. God creates uh, all the, the stars, the constellations. God creates the universe. And God starts to work in this planet, in earth. Um, uh, by the way, there is no life outside of this planet, okay? <laughs> well, that's another, another session here, maybe. Oh, but uh, but the, the point is this, that uh, God starts to work in this planet, and God gave order to this planet, and God separated the waters from the waters, so God established the gravity in this planet, and, and He put the salty water there in the oceans, and God put the sweet water here in the rivers and the lakes, and God uh, created the, 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 the fishes and the birds, and, and later from the ground, the, the, the grass, and the trees and, and the animals and, and God created man and, and, and he put him uh, to work and later uh, he put him to sleep and he took a rib and he creates a, a woman and brings it to him. God created everything, all of this in six days. But at the end of the six days, at the end of the week, God was so tired. Whew. All the work that he did in six days. So he was so tired that in the seventh day, he needed a rest. He needed to take some time to just to relax and uh, put up his feet because he was so tired. No, 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 that's the problem. No, uh, that, that, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. God wasn't tired at all. He didn't use one ounce of energy to create everything that exists. He just say it and appears there. He works with the man, obviously, but, but, um, but he creates everything with his word. So we need to understand the meaning, the meaning of the word rested here. The word, the word, the Hebrew word rested here is just that he, not that he uh, have a time to refresh himself. No, but it is, it is the uh, meaning that he sees of creating things. He did not continue creating nothing after the six days of creation. So what he did, he celebrated, he commemorated his creation. He stopped creating things. He ceased of creating things. So one thing is the day, another thing is what God did. God commemorated his creation and he ceased of creating something else. There is nothing else created after the six days of creation creation and there were days like in our days 24 hours per day like we have it today okay now one detail here if you remember Genesis chapter 1 in every single day for the first six days God said and it was the evening and the morning of the day one it was the evening and the morning of the second day it was the evening and the morning and on to six days but in the seventh day he didn't say that he didn't say it was the evening and the morning of Shabbat or Saturday he never said that. Okay, just keep that uh, thought in your mind. We're going to use that later. So the day of, of uh, Shabbat, the Saturday, where God sees of his works, he leave it open. He didn't close that day. Just keep that thought in your brain. We're going to use it later. Now, let's continue to, uh, to see a little more details in the Bible about uh, this day, Shabbat. Go to the law. Go to Exodus chapter 10, to the Ten Commandments, please. Actually, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20, please. And we're going to read here the commandment about 
the Shabbat, please. In Exodus chapter uh, 20, and we're going to read verses 8 to verse 11, please, uh, Brother Eric. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in, in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Thank you. Here in the Ten Commandments, uh, where all the other uh, 611 commandments on the Old Testament uh, come from, these Ten Commandments, uh, God is putting here the uh, remembering of the celebration of the Sabbath day, of the uh, celebration on Saturday, what they must do. Now, why? God gives us the reason why in verse uh, 8, He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, that means to put it apart, to set it apart, okay, to uh, to sanctify this day. Now, how are they going to do it? Verse 9 and 10 explain us how they're going to do it. The way to keep it holy or to separate the Sabbath is not doing any work, not doing works. You cannot work, your wife cannot work, your children cannot work, your servants cannot work, your animals even cannot work, okay? It must be a day without works. And he says in verse 11, why? He says, because God created everything in six days, and in the Sabbath day, He ceased of creating things. Okay, is what the Bible says there. Now, let me show you something here in Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Now, you workers among the Jewish people, you must to understand and to know very well the uh, Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter, uh, chapter 23 is a very important uh, chapter. We're going to study in another session on detail of this chapter, but it's very important that you uh, must to uh, know how to handle this chapter working among the Jewish people. And I want to, uh, here in this chapter, we have the eight feasts that God gave to Israel to celebrate, okay? Each of these feasts is a picture of Jesus Christ, His work and His, um, his ministry, and, uh, and we're going to study that in another session. But let's go into see a few details here that I want to show you. There were eight uh, feasts here, and please, Brother Eric, can you please read uh, verses 1 to verse 3, please? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and saying to them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. The first one, uh -huh. Six days shalt thou shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Thank you very much. The first feast, God said, okay, every weekend, every Friday evening and Saturday, you will have a date of not doing works, and it is the Sabbath day, okay? It's a day, and in that day, if you're going to do something, what you're going to do is not doing nothing, okay? Not works. Now, in this chapter, we have seven more feasts for Israel, and in some of these feasts, uh, fe how do you pronounce that? Feasts? Feasts. Feast. Feast, thank you. And in, in, in some of these feasts, uh, you will see that there is also some uh, Shabbat or some, some Sabbath in, in day, some, some uh, days of Sabbath. Let me show you, please. Go to verse uh, 7. Please, can you please read verse 7 and verse 8? Here is talking about another, uh, the, the third feast, that is the, the unleavened bread feast. Please, sir. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is in holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Thank you very much, sir. Here is the feast, uh, feast in verse 6 uh, of the unleavened bread. Okay, we have Sabbath, we have Passover, and we have this feast. Now, this feast uh, began in the 15th of the month, okay, after the, the, the day after Passover. Now, in the, this is a feast of seven days. And uh, this feast must to start, or begin, start, uh, it's seven days, but the first day must to be a day of holy convocation, verse 7. And they do not, uh, ye shall do no servile work therein. That means that they don't supposed to do any works in the first day of the of this celebration and in the last day the first and the seventh day of this feast the, uh, the feast of the liver bread you don't supposed to do any work at all what that means that it is a shabbat 
It's the same that is Shabbat. Now, the calendar is not the same every year. The Jewish people, they use a calendar in the, in the biblical days, and still in our days. They use a calendar of 360 days on the year. This is the moon calendar. And, uh, and the calendars, uh, um, they are not exact, exact every single year. For example, this year, your birthday. Maybe you celebrate your birthday in Tuesday. Next year you will not celebrate Tuesday, you will celebrate or Wednesday or Monday. So the calendar changes every year. Now, uh, here we have that the Jewish people, they have, they, they keep the Shabbat, they keep the Saturday, the, the day of rest in Saturday, Friday to Saturday, and the next Friday to Saturday. But sometimes some of these feasts uh, uh, fell in one of the days during the week. So maybe this feast began in Tuesday. So they have the Sabbath of the weekend and they have the Sabbath of Tuesday because the first day of the, of the feast, they must to have a day of not doing works. That is a Sabbath. So they can have some weeks with three Sabbaths, the Saturday of the weekend when the feast began and the Saturday of the same weekend. Are you following me in that? Let me show you a couple more examples here in this uh, feast. Go please to um, the verse 21. Here we have the feast of Shavuot or the feast of the weeks that we know better as the week, as the uh, Pentecost uh, uh, event in Acts chapter 2. But please, verse 21, what it says. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be in holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work with it therein. It shall be a statute forever and all your dwellings throughout your generations. Amen. Thank you very much. Again, in this celebration, in this feast, uh, the Feast of the Weeks or the Feast of Shabbat, uh, they must to have a day of no labor. That is a Shabbat also. Go please jump on to verse 25. This is the Feast of Trumpets, verse 25. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Okay, again, is, uh, you can read, I'm sorry, you read the context in verse 24, 25, talking about the Feast of Trumpets, and he's talking about, uh, please read, I'm sorry, brother, I jump verse 24. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have in Sabbath, and a memorial of the blowing of the trumpets, and holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Thank you for that, sir. Thank you very much. So here we have the Feast of Trumpets, and they must to have also a Sabbath, a day of no doing works, okay? Also in the Day of Atonement, in verses 28 to verse 32, you can read that later. And uh, in the Feast of Tabernacles, verses 34 and 35, you must, uh, the Bible commands that they must to have a um, Sabbath day there. So there was weeks that they have more than the regular Sabbath. If the feast comes in the middle of the week, they have two or three Sabbaths, uh, Saturday, the other Saturday, and the celebration of the feast in, 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 the, in the week. Now, just a, a, um, a brief uh, commentary here. That's why many people have struggles with the, with the dates, in, uh, uh, the dates of, uh, of, of when Jesus died. Many people celebrate and claim that Jesus died on Friday. Well, uh, that's a problem because uh, from Friday to Sunday morning, when he resurrected very early in the morning, um, you cannot get three nights. It's Friday to Saturday is one night, and Saturday to Sunday is two nights, so you don't have three nights. And the prophet says that he must to be three days dead, and he declares that he will be three days and three nights uh, dead. Uh, uh, his body must to be in the tomb for three days and three nights. Now, many people get this confusion because when they read the Gospels, they read uh, just... Uh, reading uh, very quickly and they see that uh, Jesus was in the cross and the, the Jewish people, the, the Jewish people, they want to take him, uh, they want to take the bodies out of the cross because that night they will celebrate the feast and it was Shabbat at that day. Well, what they don't consider is ex uh, what happened here in the calendar. Um, what happened is that is something interesting here. Uh, Jesus was celebrating Passover, Pesach, in Wednesday night. Now, uh, that after the celebration, he went with his uh, apostles and some of his disciples to the Mount of Leaves, to the uh, Garden of Gethsemane. He was arrested. He, he passed the trial and everything what happened in the, during the night. And very early in the morning, Thursday morning, he was handling the cross at 9 a.m. in the morning there. And he was there until 3 p.m. Now, um, <laughs> do you remember in the Gospel when he says that, the, the Jewish nation, they want to take the bodies out of the crosses because uh, th that day they will celebrate Passover. Okay, Jesus celebrate Passover Wednesday night. And the Jewish people celebrate Passover Thursday night. Who was wrong? 
Obviously, Jesus never was wrong. So it was the Jewish nation who was wrong. What happened there? And we're going to see that in detail. But what happened is that the Jewish, the Jewish nation, what they did uh, with the tradition, is they took two different feasts, uh, Passover and Unleavened Bread, and they make it one feast only. And uh, they change the, 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 uh, date, the, the, the dates that they celebrate. But Jesus celebrated in the right day, uh, the 14th of the month, the, the, the Passover, and Israel was celebrating the next day. Now, what happened there? What happened is that uh, the Jesus celebrated in Wednesday night. He was arrested in Thursday. He was there. Now, that evening in Thursday, it was the first day of the unleavened bread. Wednesday, it was the, the 14th. Wednesday, Wednesday evening was the 14th of the month when they, you must celebrate Passover. And that day, Jesus was arrested in the night. Thursday, 14th, he was in the, in the cross. But in the next day, 15, that Thursday in the evening, uh, that day begins the other feast, that is the unleavened bread. And the first day of the feast, they must have a Shabbat, a day of resting, of not doing works. But what happened is what it was Wednesday, uh, Thursday evening, that is uh, from Thursday evening, evening to Friday, they have the Shabbat or the, uh, the, the, the day of not doing works for that feast. And Friday evening to Saturday, they, they had the regular Shabbat of every week. So what happened that week is that it was two days of Shabbat, two days of Shabbat or two uh, days of not doing works together. Uh, 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 Thursday to Friday and Friday to Saturday. So what happened there, it was a, a great Shabbat or a Shabbaton. It was two uh, Shabbat days together. And that's why many people get confusion about when Jesus was uh, crucified. But he was crucified and buried uh, in, in Thursday. Okay, let's continue here. So we see that there were other days of uh, of Shabbat or uh, um, of not doing doing works. Okay, now let's going to uh, see some details in Hebrews chapter uh, three, please. We're going to see Hebrews chapter three and Hebrews chapter four, and let's going to make a conclusion about uh, the Sabbath day or the Sabbath event, and we're going to see what it is. Okay, we're going to start in Hebrews chapter three, and please, brother, can you help us reading? Um, uh, starting in verse 7, please. And I'm going to uh, interrupt you for, for make some commentaries, some, some there, please. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Okay, let's understand the context here. I'm sorry about interrupting you, brother. Let's see the context here. God is talking about Israel in the desert. Is that clear? He says, your, uh, your fathers uh, 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 provoke me, okay, when? For the years, okay. So when this happened? When Israel was in the desert. Now, remember, Israel came out from Egypt, and where they were going? To the promised land, okay, to the land of Israel. They were going to that way, okay, to the promised land, to, the, to Canaan. So uh, they were 40 years in the desert, but they were they, they're going in that direction. Okay, verse, uh, next verse, please, brother. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Ah, re, 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 re. And sorry, in Israel, they, they, they say rega, okay, for, for wait, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where they were going, to where? To the promised land. But God says here, he's changed now the description. He says in verse 11, he says, so I, uh, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my promised land. You know what it says there? No. It says into my rest. Huh. His rest? So he's changing here the description. Now the rest that he began in Genesis chapter 2, now is changed onto the promised land and symbolism here. The rest. Now, let's continue, please. Verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Okay, here, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Here is he's talking now to us. Now, here the writer of this uh, letter, maybe Apostle Paul is what I believe, and I can be wrong, I'm sorry about that, but it's what I believe. Uh, here he's talking to us. He says, brethren, he's talking to us, the believers in the New Testament, the Christians in the church. Now he, he gives us an exhortation. Verse 13. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. 
Thank you. Here he's talking to us and he's addressing to us. He's saying that be careful that maybe there is some among us, some among you, church, that maybe, or you people, your Christians, that maybe is, 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 he has incredulity, verse 12, maybe it has unbelief, I'm sorry, unbelief, incredulity in Spanish, unbelief, and, and maybe uh, you are like Israel in the desert that many do not believe. Verse 14, please. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Continue. While it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt but Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? The answer is yes. Uh -huh. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Ah, so Israel came out of Egypt and many of them, they did not believe the word of God. And because of that, they did not enter where? In the rest of God. And they did not enter by unbelief. And we have an admonition and warning to us. Be careful. Maybe somebody in the church is, he has a hard heart and he is an unbelief. And he will not get unto where we're going. And now verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, please. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us entering into rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Okay, now he's addressing to us. He's saying in, the, in verse 1, Let us, therefore, he's talking to us, not to Israel anymore. Now, where are we going? We as believers, we believe in Christ and we are in the church. We're going to where? Our hope is to go to heaven. Heaven. Now, we're going to be in the, in the millennium kingdom of Christ, but we're going to heaven, right? But now here is his referring that we have a promise to enter where? Verse 1, into his rest. Huh. Changing the wording again. Verse 2, please. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that, had, that heard it. The problem always is the lack of faith. Verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. In verse 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on the wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. Here God is putting in context where we start our study in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. Verse 3 he says, We that believe already, we enter into the rest. What rest? The rest that he lived open in the Sabbath day there back in Genesis chapter 2. So by belief, by believing in Christ, we enter in the rest of God. The problem with the people that did not enter in the church and the believers, that the professors, but not the believers. And the problem with Israel was that they did not believe. Now, uh, is verse 5, he says, uh, I'm sorry, verse 5, we didn't read verse 5. He says, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. So God is talking about his rest. He says, don't make a big deal about, uh, about the, 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 the promised land. The important thing is my rest. You must to come to my rest. Uh, the, the promised land is, is temporary. Don't you, what you need is my rest to be with me for eternity. Church, uh, the, in the New Testament, okay, the, what you need is my rest. You, the, the, you need to be believers in Christ. And when you are believers in Christ, you enter into my rest. Verse 6, please. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Because unbelief. Okay, because on unbelief they did not enter. Verse, uh, next one, verse 7. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Continue. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. 
Okay, here is about the word Jesus here is talking about Joshua. Okay, it's talking about Joshua. And um, uh, it's, not, it's not a problem that is translated as Jesus. Uh, it's the same, just, uh, the same uh, name, okay? Uh, Joshua and Jesus, the same name in, in Hebrew. Now, listen to me. Here in verse, um, where, we, where do we have that? In verse 8, it says, If Joshua had given them the rest, but Joshua gave to them the land, right? They entered, they conquered Joshua, and Joshua gave it to them. So he's talking something different. That's talking about, not talking about the land. He's talking something about, about something higher. Verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. The explanation is here, verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. He says, it's a beautiful verse, verse 10, that explains everything. He says, because the person that had come, had entered into the rest, into his rest, the rest of God. It says here in verse 10, we also, that enter into his rest, we also, we rest, of, uh, I'm sorry, from our own works as God rest of his works. Okay, what, let's put everything together. What Shabbat is? Shabbat is the condition of being saved by faith. When you receive Christ as your Savior, you uh, enter into the rest of God that He left open in Genesis chapter 2. And now as He sees of His works, you cease also of your works. And you don't have to, to do something. You don't have to do nothing to get the heaven, to get access to heaven. You have rest in Jesus Christ. You are saved. So what it means Shabbat? Shabbat means to be saved by the works of Jesus Christ. And we enter into his God into his repose, his rest. I'm sorry, I say it in Spanish, into his rest, and we are saved. So, when do we keep Shabbat? When do we keep this, this, this uh, celebration? Every single day, because we are saved. So, we enter into the rest of God by the works of Jesus Christ. So, Sabbath is not a day. Sabbath is not a land. Sabbath is not heaven. Sabbath is not a, a every single weekend that must be practiced. No, 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 no. Sabbath is the condition of being saved by the works of Jesus Christ. Simple like that. People who, uh, many people, they, they worship Saturday. There's uh, some church, the, the, uh, the Adventist church, is that how they pronounce? They, they, the, the Adventist uh, Adventists, they worship Saturday. No, no, uh, no it's a sin. They're going to church on Sunday. You must go on Saturday. Okay, okay. They go, uh, they, they make a big deal about Saturday, but what about your sin? What about your lie? What about your stealing? What about uh, your, your adultery? What about your, your problems? They say, well, that, that's another thing. But Sabbath is so holy. No, you, you don't get the point. You don't get the point. It's not about worshiping a day or doing something so special in that specific day. Even the Jewish people, they, they are so attached to the Saturday. They, they don't get the point. They don't get the point of God. Okay? The point is that Sabbath means to rest of our works by the works of Christ. And we enter into the rest of God that he left open there in Genesis chapter 2 for everyone that believed. The way of entering into his rest is by believing, by faith. Are you with me so far? So this is our Shabbat that we keep, we keep every single day. Now, what about the day of the Lord? So when we're supposed to meet? Because we need to meet, obviously, as a believers, as a body of believers. Now, there is no a commandment, a specific commandment in the Bible about when to gather together, when to have meetings, okay? But we have some example of the church in, uh, in the first century, and I don't like to, to call them the primitive church, as many people call them, because they were now primitive. We, in our days, we are very primitive about uh, our Christianity. They, they weren't primitive. But the church of the first century, let's, let's call it that way. Go to Acts chapter 20, please, verse 7. Acts chapter 20, verse 7. Wait, let's go and see an example of the church in the, in the first century. Uh, Acts 27, please. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Thank you. They, they gathered together there, and there in verse 7, and they gathered when? 
the first day of the week. When is that? In Sunday. Sunday, they were together, and uh, they were together to, um, what it says there in English, to uh, break bread, okay? Now, the, the Bible is not conclusive here. If they uh, gather together to have a meal, a fellowship, or if they gather together to celebrate the Lord's Supper, okay? They just say break bread, so it can be one or other, okay? Many, many, believe, many people believe that they gather together to celebrate Lord's Supper. Um, that's good. Uh, I believe that also, so that's good. But if not, it, it not makes a big problem. The point uh, that we are uh, uh, driving here is that uh, they gather together, they reunite together in Sunday. And there, they have a preacher, and they hear the amonestation or the exhortation of the preacher. Is what we can conclude of that day. Now, 1 Corinthians 16 also, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Thank you. Here he's saying every, and this is a commandment, every first day of the week, every first day of the week, he says, uh, come to a certain place and have a meeting, gather together with one purpose, to bring offerings according how you prospered that week. Huh. That's, some, that's some interesting concept for the church. Why we gather to worship God? No, 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 no. We don't, worry. we don't gather to worship God. You're supposed to worship God every single day because He's your God. And by the way, worshiping God is not going in raising hands and singing some soft song with beautiful soft music. That's not worshiping. That's not worshiping. Worshiping in the Bible is kneeling and putting your, your face in the ground and, and be uh, humble yourself and talking to God and recognizing that He is the Master. Okay, but uh, and more than that, uh, uh, worshiping, the, the Hebrew word means like, it's like a, a dog going with his master and, and recognizing that he's the master and, and licking his hand with his, with his tongue. And that is the, the meaning of worship in the, in, in the Old Testament. So when, when we worship God, we go there and we kneel and we prostrate, we put our face, our face in the, in the floor and we recognize you are the master, I'm your servant, I'm nobody, I have no problem. That, that is worship. That is worship. And th that's something interesting. How, how is it possible that Christians do not worship God? Well, that's another thing. But the point is this, that uh, uh, we don't gather to worship. We worship every single day. We're supposed to worship every single day because He's our, our God. But the point here is that we gather together. Apostle Paul says, okay, every, sing, every first day of the week, you gather together and bring offerings. <laughs> Many Christians gather in the church, but they forgot the, ch uh, the checkbook at home. And that's another thing. I'm sorry. I'm not preaching. I'm sorry about that. But, uh, but he, the, what the implication here is that they uh, have a meeting every Sunday, okay? Every first day of the week. But there is no limit here in this context to the purpose of the meeting. So they came together, the believers, they came to a certain place and they gathered together as a, as a body. They gathered together and, and they brought their offerings and they were there together and said, okay, why we don't sing something to the Lord? And they say, sing some songs or they, they wrote some, uh, some uh, songs and maybe they say, okay, somebody has a word of testimony. Somebody can uh, share something that happened this week with you that the Lord did with you. Somebody gave testimony maybe. Somebody, they say, okay, uh, we are here together. We present offerings. We give testimony. We sing to the Lord. Do we have a word of exhortation? And they have prophets. They have in the, in the first century, they have preachers. Prophet is uh, somebody who speaks in public. They have prophets. They have preachers. They have the apostles. Uh, okay, so do you have exhortation? for the people. So the prophets, the, the, the apostles stand up or the preachers and they gave exhortation to the people with the word of God when they did that in the Sunday, in Sunday. It's not a commandment, but it's, uh, it's the example that they, that they gave us. Now, the, the, the first uh, church in Jerusalem, uh, they, they gather every single day. They have meetings every single day and uh, that would be good. But, but the problem today is that we cannot gather every single day because in that case, uh, you cannot watch the, 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 the news and the movies, so that's why we cannot gather every single day. And I'm sorry about that. I'm not preaching. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just forgot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You must forgive me. I'm a Baptist preacher. I'm sorry about that. And the last verse, please, is Hebrews chapter 10, please. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. We do have a commandment that we cannot, we don't supposed to stop 
uh, 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 um, having, uh, congregating us in the church, please. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. And let us consider one another to provoke us, provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Okay, here we have a commandment, we have a recommendation and a commandment that we not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. We must go to church. When? Doesn't matter, Sunday, uh, Monday, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night. Every, every time that the church has a, a, in a schedule a meeting, we must to be there. But the example of the church in uh, Jerusalem, the, the church in the first days, even when Jesus resurrected, they, when the same day that he resurrected, they were, uh, they, they were together and Jesus appeared in the midst of them in Sunday night. Eight days later, Thomas wasn't there. Eight days later, Thomas was there and they gathered again in Sunday. So we have the example of the, of the church. That's why we gather uh, together as a body in Sunday. Also, Jesus resurrected Sunday. There's all the reasons. But the point here in this lesson is not when we must to gather, but what Shabbat means. And Shabbat is not a day, is not a land, is not a place, is not heaven. Shabbat is a condition of our hearts that rest in the works of Christ. And because of faith in Him, we enter into God's rest. Simple like that. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, for the cross, for the salvation that we find in Him. And thank you because we don't have to do nothing to impress you so we can earn heaven, access to heaven or access to you. No, thank you because Jesus did it all to, so we can have salvation. Now, we understand that there's uh, works that we must do because we are saved. But thank you for the salvation and the rest that we find in Jesus Christ. And we are in your rest. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you. Help us, please, in the understanding of, of biblical principles and doctrines. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.